What's up, Candy Lickers? Pleased to meet you. Nice to know me. What you doing? You listening to another edition of Cassio's Cut, and I am joined by my special guest, wrestler extraordinaire, Corey Hollis. What's up, buddy? Wow. Not much, man. How are you? Great jacket. Yeah, thanks. I got an orange shirt on under it, too, or a Brain Buster shirt on under yeah. it, too. Yeah. <laughs> What'd I go yeah. with? Uh, oh, I got the uh, Jimmy's Famous Seafood. Oh, I've never had it. Led's Everybody up. puts it over, but I've never had it. Yeah, it's the place. It's the best. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Definitely hit it up. All right, we got a lot to do. If you don't know Corey, you're about to get a crash course. Uh, you are a wrestler, and you ha you are from Alabama. So that's yep. where we get the tie-in together. Yeah, yeah. And our uh, crazy got you mutual friends. It? It's just something I always want to do ever since I was a little kid. Uh, I was uh, eight years old, and my dad turned on Nitro. And from then on, it was strictly wrestling 24-7 for me. I was hooked right then and there. Uh, <laughs> there, was nothing, there was nothing else that really interested me growing up. Uh, it wasn't any, like, athletic sports or anything. Like, football really didn't amuse me. Uh, basketball, none of that did. I did collegiate wrestling or amateur wrestling in high school, but uh, I did that just, you know, for the basics to when I eventually trained to be a pro wrestler. So, but yeah, ever since then, it's uh, it's been nonstop wrestling. And then what? You just sling yourself into indie shows when you get on and off? What are you doing? How, how are you going? How are you going to get in the business? Well, I was hanging – I was hanging, yeah, I was hanging with some friends from Leeds, Alabama, and across the street, there was, like, these, you know, interesting people that were doing backyard wrestling, and I was like, you know, why not, and they had, like, the trampoline, and they put, like, a, they had, like, a little rail on top of it, so I tried to do, like, springboards and stuff and all that, and then one day, they rented a ring from a guy named Will Owens, and uh, I went there, and you know, rolled around, paid like 200 bucks for the day or something like that. And just like learn how to bump and like the simple stuff. And then Will wanted to run a whole spot where I would do the whole AJ leapfrog, drop down, drop kick. And then he was like, do a crossbody off the top rope. I was like, are you serious? And he's like, yeah, it's like, did it. And then right off from there, I trained for a whole year, learned the uh, basics, uh, really learned how to, you know, really put a match together more so than running, learning how to do, uh, all the cool, crazy spots that, you know, you don't really see me do anyways, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, uh, you know, trained for about a year till I had my first match in 2009 against a guy named Jesse Emerson. Jesse Emerson. Yeah. You remember that name? That sounds familiar. Yeah, he was, I think he was, no, he lived in Birmingham, but he did a lot of the, uh, North Alabama shows, uh, I think he did some things with uh, in Indianapolis as well, and a lot of stuff in Tennessee. So yeah, but as he as I was coming in, he was kind of like getting out because he was in law school and all that. So you you have your first match? Is that does that feed the beast or does that? Uh... <sighs> Not really. Like I mean, it, it's uh, I mean it was something. I mean it was great, and it you know it you know it just wanted me to do more. And then the second week, I wrestled Mike Posey for the first out of. Eight million times and uh, I was about to tore say my you long with them. <laughs> and tore my meniscus and uh, oh. so yeah, second so, match, second match tore my meniscus the first time and then uh, they Doctor Dugas who works with Andrew stitched it yeah. together and uh, and then I got to go to WrestleMania that year in Houston was it Dallas yeah no not Dallas Houston uh and got to sit in the skybox before the sean and undertaker match which was really cool. whoa yeah i was like sitting maybe five feet from rick flair during that match and the one thing i remember from that and it was like the week before i went to go have my surgery is he stands up after that undertaker sean match which was probably the greatest wrestlemania match that is still talked about you know 11 12 years later mm -hmm. and he gives it a standing ovation after he did it everybody in the skybox did. <laughs> nice. and i was just like i was just like that that's like just the coolest thing in the world you know yeah so to get respect yeah. from your from your peers and your yeah guys who came before you that's that's freaking sweet yeah it was cool to see him do that and it was just watching because that match was unbelievable good like that's a match probably i watch at least once a month just try really? to learn something new yeah i love that match that that's one of my top favorite matches especially since i was there live and uh but yeah, that was one of those, you know, moments that always sticks in my mind. I, I remember the entrance and everything about it. I remember the, 
Taker drop it on his head because the camera guy spot and all that and the whole finish with the moonsault, Taker catching him, the tombstone. Always loved that. that. That was just such a – they did all the cool stuff that everybody loves, but they did it right. They did – everything they did was intense, and they told a story, and, you know, which is the lost art in today's world. But, you know, it was fun. It was good. It was good we'll get to it, but, uh, you know, you, you've had some uh, AEW matches now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, that was my one of my questions, and, and you brought it up, so I'll, I'll just go ahead and ask it now. They mentioned on the broadcast that you're, quote, an old school guy. You want the old school way. You're, Ricky Morton's your, your idol. Is that all them just making stuff up? <laughs> no, you no, that's not stuff making beforehand? stuff up. Well, yeah, I was feeding them stuff, but, like, the I think – I don't think it was Ricky. I uh, I was meant, you know, I was kind of mentored by Robert Gibson, and that's because oh, he okay. mentored Will Owens, and I got to know Robert and Ricky. But I have more of a closer relationship with Robert than I do Ricky. I love them both, right. uh, but yeah, and I think a lot of that too comes with the fact that I'm good friends with you know FTR. Uh, you know, me and Cash have a long history of you know wrestling each other in Georgia and in the Carolinas and stuff. And actually he was him and date or Dax was my first, uh, NXT match. Uh, so yeah, you know, I have a long history with them and we both like all three of us and, you know, a few of us more all just think about the same of how the business is and how it should be. And, uh, that's what we, you know, grew up watching was great storytelling wrestling. I spent a day with, uh, it was Ricky and Robert at StarCast, mm -hmm. and uh, just to hear them tell stories, one, just to see how many of the other talent of the other wrestlers come up to them that don't even know them yet, and just say, yeah. hey, I want to introduce myself, you guys, legends. Uh, and then those guys are some, let's see. They're, they seem like fun guys. Let's just they are. That. They are. Uh, <laughs> I've, been, I've been on a couple of road trips with Robert, and uh, – he, he, he tells the same stories every single time about sure. being in the amusement park with Ricky and, you know, how they closed it down for him and Ricky because there were so many girls trying to get to him and all this <laughs> other stuff. And, but, no, I love those yeah. guys. They, that, they're, they're a lost breed of in wrestling, which is needed more of uh, guys to – and they want to give back. They want to teach. They want the business to succeed, and they want it to grow, and they want it to have the respect and, that goes along with it as well and to continue that respect after they're gone. So and still yeah. wrestling. Yeah. They're crazy. And they still blood. go and they can still go, and, you know, <laughs> and, and they get, and they get, they still get the biggest reactions out of anybody else the whole night. They're going destroyers off the top rope. Like yeah. just a couple of weeks ago. I saw. I saw, well, I saw the one he, Ricky did over the weekend with the DCW? son. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, good grief. <laughs> yeah. Good grief. All right, you, you brought them up. Let's go ahead and mention them. Yeah. Um, FTR. Mm -hmm. uh, you knew him before that, of course, but uh, talk about coming up with those guys. Those really are uh, – they fit right in with that mold of old-school wrestlers and yeah, having that uh, mindset. I, yeah, and like I said, I think it's because, like, we get along so well and mesh so well together is because we all vision wrestling the same. Um, you know, we live, breathe, eat, sleep, wake, go to bed watching wrestling, wake up watching wrestling. It's all we talk about. It's all we think about. Uh you know, us, John Schuyler, you know, uh, Jackson Riker, you know, a bunch of those. Like, I feel like I was like an adoptive Carolina guy, especially when I started branching out of Alabama. Like, I was adopted by all the Carolinians. And uh, uh, and I got, you know, and they're they're a little bit more seasoned than me. They, they've wrestled longer than me. But uh, I think we all envision the business to be the exact same uh, and what it should be and everything else and giving back and – just having a respect for for something that we all love. How are you? Were you always a shit hill when you were with them? When I first uh, saw you, you yeah. were super shit hill. Yeah, where was that at? Uh, first time I ever saw you in person was at um, the tournament in Chattanooga. Oh, is or, that where I laid there forever? Uh, yeah, yeah, you were talking a lot, yeah. Smack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, was I that guess. SCI? I, yeah, the scenic city in yeah. Chattanooga. Yeah, I think a lot of that came from when I was when I first started tagging with like uh, Adam Page. You know, 
we were both like young guys. He was already signed to Ring of Honor and I was doing a little bit with Ring of Honor and we were just trying to do that style, you know, and then, but like within that style, we were trying to do, make sense out of all the cool stuff. And like, that's what I was talking about earlier with like Sean and Taker. They did so much cool stuff, but they did it in a right way with storytelling and selling, but they also had purpose. this intensity. Yeah, they didn't look like they were just throwing things for just the sake of throwing things. Everything they did, there was no wasted movement in it. Um, I think just being around them, and especially like, uh, I'm more closer to Cash. He would always, he was going to Japan and Europe and stuff like that a lot. And, and working with him, it really upped my game just because of the simple fact of, Everything he wanted to do was uh, smooth, crisp. Not only that mechanically, but also uh, thinking five steps ahead of how the crowd is going to react to what we're doing. And I think what really turned the whole heel act on for me was uh, realizing that there was not a lot of guys on the independence really doing it, at, especially at like my age, my stature, and everything else. Because most guys my size, they're out there doing all the flips and stuff. I think for me was okay, what's going to make me be one of the top echelon guys? And what's going to make me a top act? What's going to make me different from everybody else? That's going to be, you know, just being a heel. Like, that's what, you know, the places we were at, that's what they were missing, uh, was a real genuine heel that wasn't necessarily a heel on when that red light was on, but also a heel just in general. And that's why you, you wouldn't see me be friend with the fans and, you know, thanking the guy on Twitter after I wrestled him off, oh, right. such a great match, you know, or posting pictures with him or anything. It's because, like, I feel like when you really want to make that work, you have to be 100% in, and you have to commit fully or it's not going to work because people will see through that. And that's why I think no matter what I do as a heel with my act now, um, and it took me a while to really, you know, get to, you know, that stature of everything, I think the reason it works is because I only allow them to see what I want them to see. You okay. know? And it, yeah, and when it, I first saw you and then yeah. started following you on Twitter and everything, you're nothing but shit talking. Yeah, and, and you know, and that's the thing is, like, how many more, and people say, oh, well, you can't really be like that. It's a different time than it was in the 80s and early 90s. It was like, money still is the same. You know, like drawing money is still drawing money, and MJF it, is always constant heel. Yep, exactly. And, <laughs> How and that work think, out? Yeah, exactly. And if you think about it, you know, there's got to be someone to make the stars, and if you're not making the stars, who's going to get elevated? And that that's the thing that's I think is lost uh, in today's sport right now, especially on the independent circuit. And I think that becomes because there's not a lot of guys to help lead. And there's not a lot of guys to help groom the next generation because a lot of guys haven't been to a certain spot in their career or whatnot. And, and it sucks for someone like me being someone that is in these locker rooms and I still need to be groomed and everything else, but I have really no one to go to because I'm the guy that everybody wants to come to for advice, not necessarily have to come to for advice or whatnot, but I'm the guy that's, you know, been to all these places and done all these cool things. And yeah, but I'm still in the, on the independent scene, which isn't a bad thing at all. Don't don't get me wrong by that. Right. But I also think if I'm ever going to make it to the next level, I have to be groomed to be in that next level at the same time, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, so it was first big break, Ring of Honor? Yeah, it was like my first year in. Um, it was in Louisville when they were still – they weren't bought by uh, Sinclair yet. Um, Carrie Silken still owned it, and they were still on like – what was that channel? It wasn't Fight Network. It wasn't – I can't remember. It was a um, – but it was at OVW 2010. Yeah. It was me and Posey versus Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. And um, and I remember the match before us, they went way long. And uh, we, we had like a seven-minute segment, and it got cut down to three. And so <laughs> – as a 20-year-old kid, first year in the business and everything, and, you know, it's like, holy crap, what do I do? I want to get all my cool stuff in. But at the end of the day, which I learned from that, was not going to be able to. So we rolled with the punches, and then I, you know, kept getting opportunities when they were in the southeast region for the most part. And uh, and 
then when Sinclair balled, I got to do a little bit more and, you know, go up to New York with them. Re- got to wrestle in the Hammerstein Ballroom, nice. sold out sold out on WrestleMania weekend. And then the next night we did a TV in the Manhattan Center, you know, which was really, really cool. Yeah, so it was super cool. It was uh, – so, yeah, I've got to do a lot of cool stuff with Ring of Honor as well. And then I uh, got to be in the top prospect tournament. And I got a lot of great friendships from my time there, you know, uh, with guys like Hangman Page and Cedric and – Kevin Kelly and others. So, you know, and Grizzly Redwood, you know, so it's, it's a, it's a, it was a great time for me. I enjoyed it, especially when I was doing NXT and Ring of Honor all at the same time. So that was fun. I won't be honest. Uh, I don't know yeah. the name of Grizzly Redwood, but it is an <laughs> awesome name. Yeah. He's shorter than me, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> if it was possible. But yeah, he's a good dude. So, uh, so that's where, is that where you meet Adam? Cause you end up tagging with him down the road. Yeah, I met him in uh, PWX at a show in <laughs> North Carolina, uh, and they threw they threw me, him, and Gallows together, and we formed Country Jacked, and uh, and then Gallows went to New Japan, joined the Bullet Club. Who would have thought? No. Or yeah, I mean, why would he do that? You yeah. know. Uh, that worked out all right. <laughs> and so uh, then me and Adam started tagging, and then at the time when. Uh, we had about two, three year run. And then at that time I was doing NXT a lot on a consistent basis. He got picked up to go to new Japan and join bullet club. And so then I turned on him and, you know, he went on and became the huge humongous star that he is today. Having his action figure in Walmart. <laughs> it was random. It's just so weird to me. Do to you see, have yeah. an autographed Adam? I do not. Come on. I do not. He don't love me that much anymore. I'm just kidding, <laughs> but I don't have one. <laughs> I do not have one, but no, nah, I, I talked to him probably about, you know, a couple times a week, you know, we, but we really don't even talk about wrestling that much anymore. We just talk about our family and, you know, how he's yeah. doing up there, especially with, uh, the you know, the whole pandemic and everything. And uh, well, him driving to Jacksonville, which is like a seven-hour drive for him all the time. So let's get – we'll get to the AW bubble in a yeah. second. But you mentioned you're tagging with Adam. Mm-hmm. Uh, Splitsville, you are now, like you said, getting a lot of time with NXT – um, how does that, how does that call go down? How are you getting approached by NXT and getting in there? Well, uh, it was, it was 2015. It was like October, 2015. Me and my friend, John Schuyler, uh, who everybody might know, uh, we were the bruiserweights. Uh, we get a text from, uh, cash saying, Hey, send me some pictures and your email real quick. And we sent them to him and he, Two minutes later, we got an email from John Cohn saying, hey, can you be in in Orlando this week? Of course, no matter, like two days advance, of course we'll be there. So they needed a team to put over the Revival because they were one of the tag titles that week as well. So they needed a team the next week to, you know, make them look really good. And we had about a six-minute match. uh, And then from there, it just, it became like a thing where we were just going pretty much once or twice a month for almost a year, year and a half. So, wow. yeah, it was pretty fun. And, uh, and at that time there was, there was weekends where, uh, we were doing raw and SmackDown and then they would tell us at raw and SmackDown, Hey, can you be in Orlando this week for NXT? <laughs> so we would drive from, well, I remember one time we drove from Knoxville to Orlando and then I had to be at ring of honor the very next day in Nashville. And so drove, we drove to Orlando and then all the way up to Nashville. And then we would, have like a couple of days and they're like, Hey, can you be at raw in Greensboro? And we're like, we'll be there no matter what. And, uh, so yeah, we got to do a lot of pretty cool stuff with that. And then they gave us some cool opportunities, booked us for WrestleMania weekend in Dallas, which was a real fun time. Uh, uh, got to do the whole WrestleMania access thing, got to actually wrestle on WrestleMania Sunday, uh, which was wow. really cool, but it was like at eight 30 in the morning, but we were like the VOD villains last <laughs> match before they were called up, which was fun. That's and, killer. Yeah, and they, you know, they gave us time and let us just go out there and have fun. And then that also same week, we got to do some house shows, which was also really cool. And so, um, and and then there was talks at the Cruiserweight Classic. And then uh, we were told, you know, hey, there might be an opportunity for you. And then they went more with the international feel with that, which is fine. It's, that's how the business rolls. Let's talk about a couple. I mean, you've had... You've had plenty of appearances for him, but 
a couple of them. One, uh, you're in there with Braun solo, mm -hmm. uh, and you get to come out and <laughs> you do this whole spiel of uh, they interview in ring on why you yeah. would face Braun, and you tell them. Mm -hmm. It's a thousand to show and five thousand to win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that was fun. Uh, it was cause that was right early in Braun's uh, push and everything, and uh, it was a simple, you know, simple segment, easy. Uh, they were like, "Well, you can change up anything you really want to, as long as it's staying with the, you know, staying within what we need you to say and all that. Even if you want to talk like Forrest Gump." And I was like. <laughs> Okay, if I you know I can do a Forrest Gump voice if you really need me to, but do I really want to be the guy known as Forrest <laughs> no, Gump no. in the Indies? You know, yeah, I am from Alabama and everything. So. <laughs> no, that's what they were trying to put on. Exactly, you. exactly. But uh, but yeah, it was fun. I mean, he uh, Braun's a really cool dude, and uh, I'm happy for him where he is, and he seems very happy where he is in the business and everything, and especially uh, you know having all that pressure. I'm sure. Uh, it, he was very, you know, nervous and hands-on with what had to be done and what they wanted and everything. So that was really cool to be a part of that because they showed me in like video packages for like a year getting taking that move. <laughs> he tossed so, you, dude. Yeah, that yeah. Was one that was uh, a big toss. Yeah, well, yeah. That where he billed me, I was like, holy yeah. crap. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, that was fun though. It was worth it. All right, another one uh, that caught my eye is. Uh, now they've got you tagging with your boy Sky again. Yeah. Uh, now here's the best part. You're, uh, you're against shining stars mm -hmm. and they're saying you're local athletes from North Carolina because you're in North yeah. Carolina Yeah. and they've changed your name. Mm -hmm. Um, what was it? Anderholm? No, that was the one with Braun. And they oh, actually Anderholm told was Braun. Yeah, yeah. I think it was like something Kennedy, Brian, Brian. Kennedy. Brian, Brian Kennedy. Kennedy. Yeah. Uh, and I forgot and what John's name was. My Can't favorite part was. is that they do this whole bit about your local North Carolina athletes. You're in North Carolina. Shining stars are coming out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then I realized uh, your gear is still Corey Hollis yeah, and Skyler. Yeah. What, what, the what's funny, happening? Well, the funny thing about that was, was uh, when the next day at SmackDown, uh, the writer for one of the main writers was like, uh, just so you know, y'all got a lot of talk on Twitter about, uh, about y'all stuff. And it was because they changed your name. Did anybody tell y'all y'all they were changing y'all's name? They're like, no, we had no idea. <laughs> like, like Lillian came up to us and was like, Hey, just so you know, we're probably not going to announce y'all, but if we do, if y'all do have an entrance, cause things change all the time there. Cause at one time at NXT, they, you know, we had an interest and we didn't have an interest and we had an interest and we didn't have an interest. It, it got, it changed like six times as we were going out. They're like, go through this curtain. Nope. Actually, you go into the ramp. Actually, no, you've got to go this side. So we kind of had like a mixture of both where we went out the side curtain and they're like, jump on the ramp. So we jumped on the ramp and then did our thing. But, but Lillian asked for our names and everything. And we told her Corey Hollis, John Schuyler, and then when we get to the back and of course our phones are blowing up and everything. And John goes, they changed our name. So I was like, what? He goes, did anybody tell you that they were going to? I was like, oh, no, but the funny thing about all that was, was, and I feel bad for them because, you know, uh, for Primo and Epico, but they were saying they were talking about us more than they were talking about the guys that we're trying to get over. And yeah, that's because, right. and also too, we were on NXT the week before us, Corey Hollis and John Schuyler. And uh, somebody very, very high up came up to us and said, hey, did, uh, did y'all know they were going to change your name? We're like, nope. And he's like, don't let them do that. And I was like, okay. Don't <laughs> let them do like, we're that. Like, we're, we're the people to say that. Yeah. yeah. Like, we're the people to say that. <laughs> so, yeah, that, it, was, uh, it, was, it was interesting, to say the <laughs> least. And then, like, and then, so I did, we worked the Shining Stars, I think it was, like, May of 2016 and then i was wrestling braun at the end of july or beginning of august of 2016 with a completely different name with the same look and everything so it, it, it's just i don't think like they realized or anything i think that's what it is too there's just so much going on on tv yeah. days and it's so chaotic uh, i'm sure you've heard and 
and yeah. how everything's changing last minute and everything is just the nature of the business. And sometimes they tell you these things and sometimes they just forget to tell you. And it just, it just happens. Overall, Tom, with NXT, good? I loved it. Uh, you know, never say never in wrestling. Uh, I, I don't think I was mature enough in my act and ready because uh, especially if I would have got signed with, you know, the Cruiserweight Classic guys that crop in 205, uh, I would have been a guy maybe with a job, but also at the same time, the way I was, was and me and John both were, we were kind of like, you know, we kind of looked like the Revival. We kind of acted like the Revival. We kind of worked like the Revival. So I think uh, if that opportunity came to us then and there, we could have easily fell to the wayside and because uh, they don't need another shorter Revival act. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I would have been just a guy in catering. And that would, that would make me depressed. Uh, and that's the thing, you know, you, you strive in this business, you always want to be creative and you're always thinking about the next thing that you can do. And you're always thinking about the next, the next show. Um, and if I was just a guy just sitting in catering every week, I'd be, holy crap, you know, my, uh, it wouldn't be, wouldn't be very happy. <laughs> you know, you yeah. would have that dream job and then you would hear about, you know, how these guys get and everything. And, but I would like, I'm a guy that I want to work for my money. I want to, I don't want to just show up and get collect a paycheck. I want to be there. I want to, I want to earn my money and everything. And I don't think that that was the right time for me. And I think now, now where I am out in life, not just, not just in my career, but where I'm at in life, I think if that opportunity was to come now, I'm hundred percent ready for it. Let's talk about the other side. Um, AEW, we've mentioned it a little bit. Um, how many, how many matches have you had there? Three? Three or four, I want to say. Um, I know Maybe. you got Scorpio Sky. It was a great match. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought I it had took it. over really well. Yeah, that match was really, really fun, and I got to have a lot of input in it, too. And uh, and, it, and it also depends, too. They tape Dark literally right after they do Dynamite. And uh, sometimes there's eight matches. Sometimes there's 16 matches. And then you're going out there all the way till 1 o'clock in the morning. And you're like dead tired, you know, but the match with Scorpio was a lot of fun. Um, wasn't happy where I was like physically, uh, but, you know, that's all it was to change that gear for me to get back on track with all that. And uh, I think now if the opportunity was to come, I'd be 100 percent ready for that as well. But, yeah, I uh, got to have a lot of, you know, time uh hanging around because there's a lot of people there that I've already worked with on the Indies or, or actually in NXT and, and whatnot. So there's a lot of folks there that I know and a lot of guys I've already, already had great matches with. They just haven't been seen on a global scale. Right. You've also, um, so right now, I mean, everything's fantastic. Yeah. You're on fantastic ground with AEW. Yeah. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. It's just like right now, uh, me and my wife, we just uh, bought a house. Uh, you know, we got some things coming in August. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, and so, uh, but, you know, right now, I'm, you know, I want to be home, uh, you know, with her. Uh, I don't want to be too far away from her. And uh, But when the time's right, I'm more than ready. And it's just uh, getting there. You were there. Now, you were there in the bubble. Mm -hmm. How weird was that going into – we got to get down there. We got to get in the bubble. And now we're wrestling yeah. and, you know, only facing one way. Was that, were they letting crowds in yet or was it still just the. No, I think the very first, the first time I was there, uh, it was the first week of them doing it in Jacksonville with no crowd or anything. I was and right so, out of the gate there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They, they weren't testing yet because it was the first week and it wasn't, we didn't know as much as we do now about it. And, yeah. uh, so I like I flew to Orlando and I stayed with Cash and then I drove his car to Jacksonville. Uh, they pretty you know they let us change in the locker room normal and everything and then then I just drove back to Orlando to his house. The second the second and third time uh, get down there you got to get tested and all that get the finger prick which is no biggie for me being diabetic I prick my finger like eight times a day and so uh, we do that and then. Now it now it's you know now what we know with with COVID, it is more more strict and everything, which is trying to keep everybody healthier and everything. And now yeah. they you know, right when 
the last time I was there was August, and that's when they were letting crowds back in. Very limited, though. So, how was that feeling when you're you're first down there with no crowds? Is that it I mean, kills is it, your adrenaline? You know, I was about to say it's yeah. gonna be. I mean, you're excited. Hey, I'm getting a I'm getting an AEW mm-hmm. match, but yeah. I got nothing to feed off of. Yeah, exactly, and that's and, and that's what we live off of is feet reacting. Yeah, this is what this is what makes this business great is reacting to the audience. Uh, even even you know with the confines of television and everything, and you have to do things a certain way, but also at the same time that adrenaline of that war of that audience, that's what keeps you going and keeps you. And especially like I said earlier, eleven o'clock at night, no crowd. You yeah. know, you're you're already you've been there all day. You're mentally drained, tired, <laughs> and all that. But also at the same time, it's a great opportunity. So like, how do you maximize that? You just kind of like. For me, I always try to think about what the commentary would say in between the things that I do, you yeah. know, and that and that's kind of like what helped me, like especially with the times with no audience, and then they started letting wrestlers, you know, be on the side, and that kind of helped, and it was like it was kind of like weird because it was kind of like doing like school matches or seminar matches, which you know, which I've done plenty of, but it was just it's still eerie, but you know, I can't wait to the day that we can just have (laughs) crowds and everything and just just go go all out again uh you know well i've talked about it before on a couple other podcasts and talking with people it it also i mean for you guys those are those are moments those are big moments there's so many guys in the aew that had their debut with no crowd yeah Uh, hardy uh brody yeah um all these guys and you go how loud would that have arena have been if that was you know yeah. and it's just that moment that kind of go you know it's still got to be a fun moment for you it's just not mm-hmm. the same yeah it's not it's not like it's not like the first ring of honor match it's not like the first nxt match it's totally different and it's a totally different world that we're living in right now and it's you know it's like really what can you really do and uh and at the time there was no independent shows at all yeah. and right now there's really not really any really going on and uh you know, so, you know, you wanted to get work. You didn't want to get rusty or anything. So, you know, you just took it and then, you know, hopefully it led to something and, and, you know, and, you know, I got to go back a couple more times. It's just, it's just for my own benefit right now. It's not something I want to go do exactly right now. You know, like, it's not something I'm pursuing. Hey, can I come this week? Hey, can I come this week? Hey, can I come this week? Just because I got life responsibilities right now you know so you know but i know that opportunity will happen again and that door will open for me and uh hopefully at that time we will have crowds and you know it'll be better for everyone involved and i and i think that helps guys too that are trying to get a look uh especially you know that's how the company is going to be like okay the crowd likes him okay we'll give him an opportunity yeah. you know to roll with some things you know and it, and and with no crowd it's really hard to gauge hey is this guy going to be you know someone we can invest in or is this you know just the guy that we can bring in every now and then well that's part of that yeah. uh, what you're talking about in uh, wwe and nxt about it changing all the time a uh, part mm-hmm. of that is they see a match and they go oh they're they're not cheering like we thought they would cheer yeah, uh, exactly. We're not back in the guy we thought we were back in. So mm-hmm. they, you know, that you change things. So, yeah, that I mean, that is part of wrestling is the fan interaction. And and it, and it's also too. It's a lot of like, you know, everybody has different flavors of ice cream when it comes to things like that. And it's and it's exactly what do you need right then and there? What is the need that you need for your company right then and there? Yeah, uh, I think that's something that I've learned too with like helping with like creative things as well as like. What does what does this company need? What's going to be better for this company moving forward? Rather than okay, we can sign this guy, but is this the right time for him? You know, and uh, and I think that's the thing too is like uh, the biggest perception in wrestling right, or not the biggest missed thing in wrestling right now is where's all the and I don't mean this against anybody, but who is bigger than any company? Who's bigger than any brand right now? Everybody is on equal playing field, right. and that happens. You know, how long can you go to see the circus? You know, we've talked about that before. It's like if there's no major, major superstar, what's really drawing in the company rather than the experience? Yeah. You know? And so, like, that that's the thing, too, that I think is really missing within the whole industry. It's not just one company or the other. It's just the whole 
grand scheme of things. Yeah. And that's part of what well, everybody is having to figure out how to adapt and move on during this yeah. thing and figure out how we get to the other side of it. Uh, you also, look, you've been in the ring with everybody. You also have mm-hmm. a few trivia moments. Um, mm-hmm. One, you tell us about your trivia moment with Undertaker. Okay. So uh, <laughs> it's pretty fun. It's kind of, it was kind of a big rib on us too. Uh, so that was one of the times they called us like the day before, Hey, can you be in Greensboro? So that was at the time I was living in Kennesaw, but me and my wife were driving to Birmingham. I, I don't know if we were looking at apartments or whatnot at the time, but I was like, okay, go there, drive back home, drive to South Carolina to get some, a couple hours of sleep and then drive up to Greensboro. So we get there to like, hey, you're going to be Druids for The Undertaker and Kane. Yeah. Uh, and which was awesome, you know. And uh, so we're dressed head to toe, and but we have these sheet masks on too because we're the ones that turned on Undertaker and Kane and joined the fa- Wyatt family. So uh, uh, we get there about three o'clock. They put us, they dress us up, and we are, dre- we ha- you know, the head to toe bodysuits. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? The whole spandex thing. <laughs> It was all over our head. Like, we couldn't unzip it. If you were claustrophobic, it was over for you. And so we're in that for hours. Thankfully, we're the first segment. Uh, but, yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, lights went out, got the turnaround, put the Wyatt masks on, the sheet mask, and get in the ring and take a choke slam from Kane, which was pretty fun. <laughs> so, yeah. So got to be one of the the last Druids ever, which was pretty cool. So that's a little, yeah, the paycheck on the pay stub said Undertaker bonus. So that's something. Undertaker bonus. It said Undertaker bonus. And I said, this is the coolest thing ever. Heck yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Also trivia, you are last indie match for AJ Styles. Yep. Yep. Yes, I am. Uh, How did this come about? Do you know going in? Yeah. Uh, Well, I kind of like pulled my strings the best way I could to make sure I was. All right. uh, uh, this was about 2016. He was, it was, the match was actually two weeks after he joined the rumble or was joined the WWE and was in the rumble. They still let him honor the, honor the match. And I think that was part, partly to the fact that I was doing WWE stuff at the time. And, uh, okay. So I think they knew, Hey, he's going to be taken care of. And so, uh, AJ is kind of like a mentor to me. He's my favorite wrestler of all time. Uh, anybody that knows me knows the way I kind of move in the ring. And uh, I, I pattern a little bit of that off of AJ. Probably people will probably say more than just a little. Uh, <laughs> but that was my ultimate dream match, man. And and it was the coolest You had never thing. worked with him before? I did a tag match with him, like right when he left TNA. But it was, it was the first time doing one-on-one. And... Uh, he was the person that gave me the confidence to do, to become a professional wrestler. Uh, I mm-hmm. remember I was like 12 or 13. I ordered a TNA pay-per-view and then got yelled at by my granddad for ordering it. But that what, the first time I ever saw him, I was like, if he can do it and he's got that Southern accent and he's short, he's not big and he's from Alabama or from Georgia, I can do this too. You know what I mean? And so yeah. that kind of, and, and, uh, and so I've always looked up to him and he's so, he's been such a great dude to help me out and everything. And so and that was the match. I tore my meniscus the second time in and didn't realize it till after the match. And, uh, then, uh, my first match back was WrestleMania access. Uh, but yeah, it was super cool. It's a real moment. My mom was there. Uh, AJ told her some things that made her cry in a good way. Nice. Um, and so, but yeah, that was a very special moment that I really hold, you know, dear, dear to me because, you know, getting, getting to wrestle your hero and especially it being his last independent match and it's going to probably be ever, uh, you know, and being able to be that guy and, you know, he didn't have to do it. He could have signed with WWE and just done the house show, you know, but he wrestled me. And then the next night was his first house show match. And so, uh, yeah, so that, that was super cool. And I'm super honored to have that moment. I mean, if you had to, if you had to box one up for the Corey Hollis, who is Corey Hollis? Is that it? Or is there another one? Uh, man, I don't know. I think for me, I think, yeah. Cause like that, that's the little boy in me, man. 
that was it, you know, like yeah. to some people that's their Shawn Michaels, you know, like to, that's my Shawn Michaels, you know, that's, that's my, that's my Ric Flair is AJ, you know? Uh, so that's, that, that's so cool. I think anything that could really top that to me would be able to do it on a grander stage. And yeah. uh, who knows if that would happen? I, I mean, that's, you know, that's in God's hands. But also at the same time, it's uh, it's it's the coolest experience that I've got to have so far. And this is coming from somebody that's been on every television show. But I wrestled yeah. AJ in a small town gym uh, in middle of nowhere, Georgia. You know what I mean? In front of only 500 people. That speaks volume. You, you, you know what I mean? And that that's the coolest thing to me. Uh, and it's just being able to – and, you know, him – him being happy with everything, him being proud of it and everything and and having that friendship and he's someone I could go to now and say, hey, can, I really need help with this certain situation. He's right there, you know, and being able to have your hero be that guy for you as well. That's the coolest thing in the world, too. Nice. Well, we're going to get to a couple things. You got a couple shows coming up. Before we get out of here, though, we got to hit you with the countdown. Are you ready? Okay, let's do it. We hit you with 10 questions. We hit everybody with the countdown before they get out of here. 10 to 1. We'll start off with 10. Corey Hollis, name something that's a perfect 10 in your life. Perfect 10, my wife. Nicely done. That's how yep. you score points, sir. Yep. Warren, uh, did you hear that? Do everything you over. A, <laughs> do everything with a purpose, son. <laughs> uh, number 9. 9 is the German word for no. Name something you've wrote off. Uh, name something that's no more in your life. This could be big. This could be small. This could be food. This could be oh, man. negative people. Whatever you want it to be. Yeah, yeah. I hate cheese. I don't <laughs> eat cheese at all. Wait, I'm that, yeah. Any more, or you've always hated cheese? I've always been that way ever since I was a little kid. Uh, Why? When, when I order pizza, I get it without cheese. What? Yeah. I told Conrad this, and he was like, he didn't believe me. But it's oh, true. There's no way. Yeah, it's great. Actually, it's uh, protein pizza, pretty much. It's really good. What did, what started the aversion to cheese? I don't know. My mom said when I was a baby, like I was just I always puked up dairy, like through crazy. But I love ice cream. I'm type one diabetic, but you know, but I do <laughs> love ice cream. But like it's cheese and anything else, really dairy, just not a big fan of. So yeah, probably cheese. That's probably what everybody thinks I'm weird about. Cheese. Yep. I did not see that coming, buddy. Yeah, not a fan. Uh, number a fan. eight, uh, when you die, what do you want to be the last thing you ate? What's your last meal? You can mix and match. You can go to you can go home cooking mixed with restaurants, top to bottom, what you got? Baumhauer's fried pickles. Oh, nice. Yeah, uh, they got the best fried pickles. What's um, their dipping sauce? You ranch? Ranch. Okay. Yeah, ranch. You are an Alabama uh, boy. Like huh? It. You are What's an that? Alabama boy. Like. <laughs> uh, probably. Have you been to Walk-Ons yet? No. They have this awesome buffalo chicken sandwich. Where is Dude, that? It's like the Walk-Ons. It's over in uh, it's over in Inverness now, over okay. on 280. Next time you're in, in the town, Birmingham I'll take area you. for everybody. Yeah. yeah, I'll take you next time you're in town. Bring um, it. Uh, mm, if I had a work in pancreas, my mother-in-law's <laughs> ice cream Oreo cake. Which is amazing. Okay, we're good. We got we got so many side stories here. Yeah, your grandmother's Oreo ice cream cake. Did I say my grandmother? I meant my mother-in-law. Oh, your mother-in-law's more more bonus points. Yeah, mother-in-law Oreo ice cream cake. Yes, that's it strong. Is the, it's to die for, and I might die. I might have. That's to your last meal. Might as well. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Now let's go back to uh, you having a work in pancreas. Yeah. Type one diabetic. So you, the the Oreo ice cream cake is gonna put you over the edge. That would <laughs> might kill me twice. <laughs> has the uh, has the diabetes ever affected the wrestling? Uh, no, not really. Uh, I, there was one instant in WWE where uh, I don't want to go into specifics because it wasn't me, but it was someone else. And that like last minute, they're like, "Hey, you need to bring all your diabetes medication." I was like, okay, oh, wow. no problem. There was like this whole, like, I felt like I was being interrogated about it and not in a bad way. I, I completely understand with the whole wellness policy and everything. 
Um, but they're like, this all under control, right? And I was like, yeah, I've never had any instant, you know, I've never had any like bad issues with it. I've never passed out because I'm diabetic or anything else like that. Uh, it's always been something that I have always tried to manage and control. Uh, and I was diagnosed right when I was going into high school at the age of 14. Uh, wow. So the only other type one diabetic I know is Kyle O'Reilly. And uh, if we were to ever have a tag team, we would probably be sugar free or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> the insulin iwo you need the insulin world insulin I, yeah i have diabetic <laughs> club shirts like the bullet club shirts yes yeah <laughs> tell them where They're they great. get those we're gonna uh, get those. i think billy had them i don't know if i billy was the one that got slide them slide your uh, dms yeah, and yeah. Them one, right yep slide in my dms right. and i'll get uh my friend billy to uh, get them to you billy yeah He's right. going to be so happy now. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven, uh, what did you want to be when you were seven years old when you grew up? A uh, pro wrestler. Boom. There you go. Mm -hmm. Is there never a backup plan? I told my mom at one time I wanted to be make people laugh or be a brain surgeon, and she she prayed every day for brain surgeon. And it did not <laughs> work. That was one of those unanswered prayers <laughs> that she always asked about. Man, I don't know. I mean, I have a strong <laughs> love for fitness, but uh, and I also do some personal training on the side. But I mean, wrestling is is my that heart. That was it. Man. Yeah, that's it. All that's right, it. number six. Let's go back six feet under. How do you want to end up dying? How do how do you want to go out? Oh, man, in ring. Oh man, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be don't want to be that story. Uh, in my sleep, old. There you go, so, peacefully, quiet, yep. no drama. No five doubt. five finger discount what's the last thing you stole Ooh, had to be little i don't remember you gotta steal stuff from hotels yeah i have i probably stole some pillows probably stole pillows. Some pillows pillows is a who good wouldn't? deal who wouldn't well Maybe, right. i've definitely i've definitely stole some towels from a hotel and shampoo <laughs> yeah well now you're clearing them yeah. out <laughs> Well, and well, TV, and maybe a TV. A, maybe a TV. <laughs> <laughs> Did you take anything from Cash's house when you crashed with him? He gave me a bunch of shirts. <laughs> he, he got mad. Him. He got mad. He got mad at me one time. He goes, "Did you take my orange shirt?" I was like, "No, I swear I didn't take the orange <laughs> shirt." Please and, tell and, me and, that's and, the orange shirt you have on right now. No, it's not <laughs> that one. This is the Brain it. Busters one. It would be. <laughs> By the way, Cash, I did. <laughs> That's a heel move right there. All right, yeah. number four. This is going to bomb with you because <laughs> you are a diabetic. Uh, I do ask the top four Little Debbies of all time. Mm. Have you even had a Little Debbie? Yeah, we of you over the edge? Yeah, I love Nutty Buddies. That's counts okay. as Little Debbie, right? Yeah. Nutty Buddies. Uh, I like the Christmas, the Christmas, Christmas cakes. Christmas tree cake. Yeah, when my blood sugar is low, I'll go ham on those. Um uh, you got a, uh, you got a Star Crunch, Fudge Round, Oatmeal Cream Pie, Honey I Bun. love Oatmeal Cream Pies, uh, and probably the Star Crunch. Star Crunch. I love, I love chocolate and caramel, yeah. Um, all right, we, we got you down for that. That was better than I thought you were going to do for diabetic. What was you going to say? What I thought you, you think? No, I thought you weren't going to have any. Oh, well, you know, I'm not a communist or anything. I mean, I talked to a couple people, Bischoff and a couple other. You know, they're like, I'm not touching stuff. Oh, that's uh, bull. They got to be <laughs> liars. All right, number three. Uh, three albums on a deserted island. So you're not you're not telling everybody, like, getting in an argument that these are the best albums ever. These are just, you got to listen to these forever. So they're going to never get old. These could be compilations, a live album, whatever we want it to be. Three albums on a deserted island. Let me look island. real quick. Let me, can I look real quick? Yeah. Uh, George Strait. Okay, which one? Uh, probably, well, he's got a best of one. Oh, yeah, greatest yeah. hits. Yeah. I, think I like the one where he's live at AT&T Stadium. Okay. That's one of my favorites. Um, Little Wayne, uh, the oh. the Carter Four. Carter Four is a good jam. Yeah, yep. Um, and the last one, hmm, what was I listening to during the gym? Kid Rock, his first album. First one. Yep. All right. Yep. You got all kinds of moods there. You're all yeah, over the board. I like it. I am. What's wrong with that? No, no. <laughs> Number two, uh, first concert you ever went to and last concert you ever went to. 
Any Chesney. Uh, was your first? Yeah, I was like 12 or 13. It was Parents at that. took you? Yeah, my mom did at the Oak Mountain Amphitheater. It was sure. the uh, No Shoes, No Shirts, No Problems tour. I remember that. Smashing it? Yep. Last what's one. That's the huh? first one you, you went, I'm spending my own money. Do you remember? Do you remember? I don't hey, know I don't I care. I'm going money. to this by myself. Yeah. Oh, by myself? Ooh, like no, I didn't, I didn't go by my – oh, without my parents. Hinder and Motley Crew at the BJCC. There we go. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's the one you're going to get. I'm going yeah. by myself, all right? And I think think the last one I went to was Lee Bryce and Catal Catalytic 3, Cadillac 3 or whatever. Cadillac 3, yeah. Yeah. I think that Where was, was about, that, right before pandemic or what? No, that was years ago. It was like 2014 maybe. Oh, so that, uh, Lee, was, yeah. Lee was young. Yeah, I was about – yeah, I was about 24. So, yeah, it was at Iron Horse. Are right, you going really? Yeah. Oh, nice. That's a good venue. Yeah. Yeah. Is that still open? I don't know, but why does anybody run wrestling there? <laughs> Look at you. Did you just think about it? <laughs> why doesn't anybody run wrestling there? I'm going to call Conrad when we're done with this and be like, hey, I got an idea. So, all right. One, I'm going to let you, you could get heat for this, or okay. we can, we can. We can take something out and change it up. Mm -hmm. I had playing most overrated wrestler, according to Corey Hollis. Uh, most overrated wrestler. I think, can we go with most overrated style? Most, whatever you want to bring heat yeah. on. I think, I think the biggest issue in all of wrestling right now is guys, uh, I don't want to say they copy. I don't want to say anything like that. I want to say they don't know who they are as a performer. They don't have... There's not a lot of drive. I think a lot of people are complacent where they are. Um, I think there's no – I've we've talked about this before, how I said there's not a lot of fear of respect for the business. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I don't mean – like, but like a respect for it that this is our passion. This is what we do. This is who we are. This is what we're labeled as. So let's treat it with so much pride and dignity that we can rather than let's just uh, go out there and say wrestling is for everyone. It's for everyone to watch. It's not for everyone to participate in. Uh, go out there uh, and, you know, give the audience their money's worth. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think, I think the biggest thing is now is everybody's too afraid to take chances. I think everybody's just too complacent. Chances um, in what? Is it in their character or their, their character? Moves? Character, more so than anything, and and dare to be different. I think everybody sh follows a certain pattern, especially with their matches. Um, I think guys think they're going to get over and become stars by what certain moves they do, but everybody does everything now. You know what I mean? Yeah. What else can we do? You know, like physically what else moves can we come up with? And there's always going to be a new move that will be, you know, come up with that will get over for years and years to come. But also at the same time, you know, like I said earlier, where are the real superstars? Who's bigger than the brands? And there's not, mm -hmm. there's nobody, um, you know, now it's, and, and it's, and it's, and it's harder. And, it, and I'm not, and I'm not trying to use that as an excuse, but it's harder for the performers to do that. But also at the same time is what's going to – what is it and who can it be to open up that envelope and push it further and further and further like no one else has done? And it and then it's so hard, too, living in this gift world that we live in that in the attention span of everybody having ADD now. But also at the same time, it's what's going to transcend history, what's going to make moments. There's And there's – thinking about it in the past, what, 10 years – five years what are the really big moments that have happened in the business you know for me mm -hmm. like the biggest like shock factor really what has really happened lately is aj showing up at the rumble and that's right. something everybody pretty much knew was going to happen yeah. you know but like other than that what has really like moved and transcended and changed the business in such a certain way such a big way and you see all these people get into all these movements and everything and all that stuff and 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 it and it becomes completely out of the realm of what pro wrestling is and people get away from what pro wrestling is and at the end of the day pro wrestling is all about storytelling it's all about 
selling tickets and I know we don't can't really sell tickets right now but it's all about selling tickets and making stars and making moments and making memories and it's not not everybody is going to be the five star match person you know yeah. and I think everybody tries so hard to be that that so many other things have slipped from us finding the next big mega star is it like in football where they preach the fundamentals is that is that kind of Hey, you got to do this other stuff right before we can get to where we want to go. I don't even think it's the fundamentals anymore. It's because guys are coming in and doing all these crazy, crazy things now. Right. At like their first, second, you know, year in. I think, you know, like someone like MJF, he he has taken that heel act and he has run with it, yeah. you know, and he he's destined to become a star in the future. But who else is that? Who else can we say is like that? You know what I mean? And how how can someone be that? Um. And, and what's the plateau for that? What's the glass ceiling for that? You know, I just think guys find, are so in tune with doing this and, and trying to impress a small percentage of the audience rather than thinking the global big scale of everything. Yeah. And, and that's like what I was saying earlier about being a heel and like really having to commit to it is you got to live it, breathe it. And especially when you're, on on that red light you know you can't leave any anything for them to get in because when they feel like they're in they feel like they feel like they they are a part of it which in a way fans are supposed to be a part of it they're supposed to be a part of people's successes they're supposed to be a part of that but when they feel like they're controlling every little aspect of it i think that's where the problem is i really don't believe wrestling is for everyone yeah. to participate in it's for everyone to watch but it's not for everyone to participate in Who's your three favorite heels right now? Oh man, MJF. MJF is great, and it's so hard to say that because there's not really Ricky just Starks, because everybody. Is he good? Yeah, I love Ricky. He's great. I I uh, I think the biggest problem is now, like what I was saying earlier, is everybody's on that equal playing field. You know what I mean? Um, uh, like Kenny Omega. You know, he's a heel. You know, and but like as like a dirty dastrous heel, you know what I mean? Like MJF, Ricky, that's pretty much it. I can't see you're doing. Kenny. Oh yeah, There's Kenny. No yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't see. <laughs> I didn't know if you were doing a Hardy thing or. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, was you doing this? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, Kenny. You know, uh, but also at the same time, and it's so hard to judge now, like when there's crowds they're going to cheer those people you know what i mean yeah. at the same time so it's kind of hard to say hey who's a heel because like the perfect heel to me is someone that's going to go out there and cheat to win i and, and or cheat to win and not care that they cheated All ftr right. you know what i mean like i yeah. gotta say them um if sean spears you know he's great as a heel um yes. i you know uh sean spears is great and see and it's so hard for me to say that on wwe please don't get mad Vince, don't kill me. Uh, but uh, but like everybody's booked in a way right now and everybody's written in a way, everybody is equal playing field right now. And that's the hardest part of it all. And, and I think once we have crowds again, it'll change a little bit. Like I yeah. think that meter will, you know, shift a little. I was about to say, I think that's when guys are going to start shifting a little bit. And yeah. And I just think that, and I think they're just trying to, I don't want to say get by, but, you know, I don't think, it's really hard to put in your best effort without those crowds. Uh, as uh, if you are listening, watching this uh, pretty close to the time it comes out, uh, which is uh, February 2nd, 2021. Uh, we just came off the rumble, which I thought was a very good mm -hmm. rumble. I uh, loved did, it. Did you get yeah. a chance to watch it? Yeah, I did. I watched it. It was a very month. good yeah. rumble. Yeah. It was one of the better ones they've had in a couple of years. Yeah. I, I, I would definitely, I don't know how far I got to go back, but I, I thought top to bottom, I kept trying to call spots. They swerved on me. So it was, mm -hmm. I thought it was a very good rumble. Yeah. Do you think Orton was going to win it at the end? Yeah. 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 I, I think everybody as as he, did. Yeah. As, soon as he started walking out, I was like, yeah. well, he's your rumble winner. Yeah. Uh, he came <laughs> uh, so when he came out, it was like, eh, and then it was like, whoa. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I thought it was, I mean, they did a lot of good stuff in there. I mean, Christian was a huge move coming back. I mean, was you, was you completely surprised by the Christian spot? 
Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. read a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. I don't I'm think like, it was on. Was it on anything? No, I didn't see. Um, that's what I'm yeah, saying. But yeah. I, I don't, I don't. I try to avoid it. it. I try to yeah. avoid it. You know, this time of year, especially. But one of my stupid friends spoiled it for me like last week, and I was no. like, "No, yeah." And I was like, "Crap." No, so, that was a good pop. That was a great. Uh, yeah. I thought Carlito was great. He looks yeah, fantastic. He dude. does. He looks. He looks jacked. <laughs> he yeah. does big. Uh, he looks jacked. And a good really jack. Yeah. I he thought was... they um what else are my thoughts? I thought they put over I thought they were definitely trying to give uh Damian Priest a push and he looked yeah. good. Yeah, I uh with the women's I was I, I was thinking either Becky was gonna show up or Rhonda. Yes. Uh, but I was like it's too early for Becky to come back after having a baby, you know. It's only yeah. been a month, right? And I so, thought they did but, that good though. Yeah, I thought I enjoyed it. I like Bianca, she's good. So yeah. Um but yeah, I, I love the Rumble. That's my favorite. That's uh, my favorite time of year. Another funny story about the AJ tie-in with the Rumble and everything. Yeah. Uh, the night of that Rumble, I was with AJ the night before, and I and I was like, because we were at Ring of Honor, and I was like, so is the match going to still happen in a couple weeks? And he's like, I made sure. I was like, I just because I, he, he was asking me questions because he was already asking me questions like, you know, what is it like, you know? And I was like, man, you're going to be at home. Yeah, you know, they're like they're gonna welcome you with open arms. You know, you're gonna be a star. Don't worry about that. And I'm like, just do you and be you, and you you will be more than fine. And it's weird telling AJ Styles that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, uh, right. but over at Skyler's house, uh, we did a rumble pool. Guess who drew number three? <laughs> you're nice. You know, and so I was just like, it's it's one of those weird things, man. It's Destiny. just like, yeah, it was just so weird, right? So, but, but yeah, that's that's my Rumble story for that year. So, but yeah, I love the Rumble. It's it's so so cool. So many stars get made. Uh, you know, it it's always fun. The only thing that sucks is, of course, no crowd. So yep. it would have been great for Christian to have that moment, for Edge to have that moment. Killer. Um, yeah, that was a thing that me and Cash talked about last year. Uh, Edge coming back and then wrestling in front of nobody for WrestleMania. I was like, man, I was like, because him and Edge are really close. And I was like, I was like, I hate it for him. He goes, yeah, me too. But, you know, I think he's just at this point happy to be back. Yeah. You know, so. That's crazy. That was almost a year ago, man. That yeah, was, right. Wow. Yeah. Are you go, are you going to Tampa? I don't know if I'm gonna make Tampa. I don't know either. I haven't like, decided yet. My wife does not want me to go to Tampa. <laughs> oh, really? Are you gonna be at Hard Rock? <laughs> uh, I don't have. I don't know. I don't have plans for anything yet. But yeah. You never know. Well, I, every time I go to Tampa, I got to go to Hard Rock, and uh, I'll probably play some roulette. <laughs> <laughs> Well, don't get me started on like <laughs> that's trouble for me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, thank you uh, yeah, for coming in you. here, dude. I, yeah. I, I had a blast. Finally, good to hook up with you. And yeah, man. Uh, can't wait to see you in ring again. And yeah. um, if everybody again listening to this pretty close to the time it comes out, you actually got something coming up. Yeah, this Friday at uh, Kent in Canton, Georgia, Southern Honor Wrestling. I think we're presenting our. 22nd or 23rd show uh me and my tag partner michael judas who used to be murphy in tna will be taking yeah. on the lynch mob uh for the tag team titles uh and then Kent, that show is really near and dear to my heart i got to have a lot of cool moments there um got to i got power bombed through the ring in a war games match okay uh, strong yeah, I've uh, tore the ring apart. Paul drove the guy that I was feuding with his wife on the boards. Um, very ECW moment. Wait, you that Paul I drove the wife? Yeah, Paul drove his wife on the on straight onto the boards. Nice. Um, so, take it like a champ? Yeah, she did. And I told her, I was like, I've done plenty of Paul drivers. That was my first one. <laughs> <laughs> out on the apron but, you know that's the uh, hardest no, part of the ring i know well there was no mat tore the mat apart tore the oh. canvas apart it was just so all you saw was the boards and did it straight in the middle so yeah um that, that's a cool show too because i got to be a part of uh jericho and kenny omega showed up there right before aew started and got to be a part of that big old brawl and that was fun i have a lot of fun at this show southern honor wrestling it's something i'm very proud of um, not just in the ring, but behind the scenes. Got a, I've had a lot of cool moments there, and uh, uh, it's my favorite place to be right now. 
I got to ask. I want. I need to see if you've got wins over any of my previous guests. Do you? Mm -hmm. uh, he, have, you have you ever been in the ring with Cody? Uh, I've interfered in a match, and I took a disaster <laughs> kick from him. So, yeah. Uh, Cabana Man Dan. I think we've been in some rumbles together. All I've right. probably thrown them out. Yeah. Mance? Oh, Mancer? No, I don't even think I've ever met Mance. What? I don't think I've me and Mance have been in the opportunity to ever meet. We gotta I could get, be we wrong. Gotta make that happen. I could be wrong, but I don't think I've ever met him. Well, don't ask you know old Mancer. He don't remember who he's right. I don't. Ever. Yeah, me neither. Sometimes <laughs> I'm the same way. CTE is very real. <laughs> <laughs> Just ask the wife that you gave a pile driver to. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, dude. Tell them how they can follow you on uh, social media. Uh, I'm on Twitter at uh, Corey Hollis. I'm on Instagram. I think it's at C Hollis three. Um, uh, not on Facebook, but I have Twitter and Instagram. And uh, if you tweet me, I'll probably say something mean right back to you. Because I don't perfectly like done. <laughs> Go find him, slide in the DMs, get you a diabetic club shirt. Diabetic club uh, shirt. I have a pro wrestling tees uh store. That's what uh, we need. Yep. At just Corey, Corey Hollis. Hollis. Yep, just Corey Hollis on Pro Wrestling Tees. I think I got four or five shirts on there. So there you go. There you go. We'll get the man. Go get some merch from the man. Uh thank mm -hmm. you, dude. Been thank a blast. You, I can't wait yep. to see you again, man. Yeah, man. Thank you. Adios, muchachos. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs>